Welcome to Retraction. I'm your co-host, Antoine. I'm your co-host, Jamie, and we are reversing course through discourse. But like always, before we get started, folks, please show us some love. Subscribe, like, share, comment on YouTube at Retraction Media, at Retraction Media again on Twitter. Follow us there and subscribe on Apple, Spotify, Google, Amazon, and more. It's a Christmas episode, Jamie. It's a Christmas episode. How about this? Merry Christmas, you filthy animals. You know, wow. That's you know that's from? You, uh, are you testing me on that? I mean, <laughs> I know where that's from. Actually, I'll do you one better. Do you know what movie within the movie that's from? No. That's Boom. a good one. That's a good one. Where I'm pretty that? sure. I am pretty sure. I have to get overly cocky. I'm pretty sure it's called Rat Bait. Oh, really? That's cool. Yeah. Wow, that's I mean, hey, listeners, I mean that that's some good trivia right there. I mean that that's definitely going to take you to at least the third round in your local bar trivia because that's that's definitely a trivia question if I've ever heard one. What movie within the movie of Home Alone is uh, Macaulay Culkin's character is called? What's his name? Kevin. Kevin. That's it. Kevin, of course. Uh, what movie is Kevin watching? I mean, yeah. that's good the one. woman's like tagline. Kevin. Yeah. Yeah. Fair enough. Well, hey, look, I'm not great at that. So that th- this is the best I could do. <laughs> yep, but it's a Christmas it. episode. It's a Christmas I'm pretty episode. sure it's rap bait. Maybe someone can correct me. It's something like that. It's been a while. I never even thought about it. Never thought to look into it. Um, so it's on the cassette tape when he puts it in on the VHS. Oh, that's cool. That's a little Easter egg. Is it? Is it, it's a John Hughes movie, right? I'm not. Uh, wait, we're not going to get lost in Home Alone. It's not a Home Alone episode. <laughs> it's a Christmas episode. Merry Christmas. Happy holidays. Yeah. Happy whatever holidays. You, whatever everybody. you. Whatever you celebrate. celebrate congratulations. We're here for you. Whatever you celebrate, we're here for you. It's a non-denominational podcast. <laughs> <laughs> it's as non-denominational as it gets. Um, so I, I, I think, uh, we, did, we, I think yeah. we did a whole episode where we're like, let's just do bank holidays or government holiday number one, right? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, we did a whole episode there. That so. way you could switch them around. You yeah. just take them as you like. And uh, and you just kind of do what you want. You, know, yeah. you get a day off, celebrate what you want, and uh, you're not hurting anyone's feelings. No exclusion. Everyone's everyone's invited to a, a lot of companies government doing, number one holiday. Yeah. A, lot, but yeah, a lot of companies are kind of getting there with that floating holiday. I feel like a lot of companies have started the floating holiday, You know, mostly because of Juneteenth and Columbus Day. At least that's my experience. So There you go. Yeah, which is already. I mean, that's basically holiday number one, holiday number two. You take it whenever you take it when you uh, when you want to. So for this episode, what I'm bringing what I'm bringing to the table uh, is my annual uh, check in. I do an annual check in on Zwete Pete. Have you ever heard of that? You ever heard of that character? Oh, what annual? Che- you did this last year? No, I didn't check it. I didn't. You know, what are you talking about? Annual check in. Well, I do. With who? I, it's it's with, with what other pot are you on, Antoine? Yeah. <laughs> it's with myself. It's with myself. I do an annual <laughs> check on myself. Well, this is what I was surprised about. I was looking at the old pods and I realized I, I don't think I've ever talked about Zwete Pete before. Uh and so I was like, I gotta bring it to the table because I, I check in on this on this uh this it's tradition. Like a, is this a French thing? It is not a French thing. It is you're a saying it Dutch like thing. I, was, I yeah, well, okay. you know, the French national, but it's a it's a it's what it's more like Zwete or Zwete. <laughs> Zwate Pete. I, I feel like I'm, I'm struggling not to say it like Borat. Zwate Pete. You know, um, but in the English, it's usually commonly known as Black Pete, which is how most people might have might have heard of it. Have you ever heard of Black Pete? How about that? No. What is wow. it? Wow. Okay. Okay. No. So, and I and listen, I, I I've seen a lot of holiday stuff, and I've seen a lot of weird stuff out of Europe too. Okay. Um, so, I haven't heard this one. So this is kind of a two part uh, story. Uh, so the, the, so the, there's the check in. And so for anyone who doesn't know, get to the point. Uh, here's an article. Uh, it was in the uh, Deutsch, uh, Deutsche uh, Welle, uh, which is like DW.com. Uh, it's like a German uh, n- news site. Uh, they did a good story back in 2018 explaining this specific Dutch tradition. Uh, the article is called Black Pete Dismantling a Racist Tradition. Uh, it goes with the arrival. This isn't of, like yeah. anything like Krampus or anything like that. See, that's what's so funny because that is usually where he gets or where they get. Um, I've seen some dark. To. I've seen some dark Krampus mountain traditions. Different. Yeah, Krump, yeah, Krampus, Krampus, or, or how you the, the German tradition is, is. It's a. It's very different. 
and uh, I've seen people in chains. Yeah, yeah. Really well, questionable. Well, we're we're stuff. gonna. Yeah. Well, this is very questionable. I was like, well. holy cow, what is I, that? I, I'll, I'll share some imagery after I first talk. I'm gonna prime you, and then I'm gonna share imagery, and then you could say, oh, okay, okay, uh, that's interesting, and I, I, it'll be interesting to hear your your reaction since you've never heard of this. But I, I I kind of feel like a lot of people have heard of it at this point, but this is good that we're covering it. So the article starts with the arrival of Sinterklaas. The Dutch figure based on St. Nicholas is celebrated with different festivities in the Netherlands. Starting in mid-November, crowds of children and parents enthusiastically gather to greet the saint as he arrives in their city or village by steamboat. He lands with his helper, the so-called Zwarte de Piets, which is Black Pete in English, traditionally depicted as a character with dark skin. In Amsterdam alone, his helper, mm -hmm, his helper. Sometimes he's called a servant, but in this article, they, they've, they've chosen to go with helper. It's voluntary, right? It's not. <laughs> in Amsterdam <laughs> alone, <laughs> hundreds of Pete's joined Santa Claus on his boat or out in the streets handing out peppermint cookies, dancing, waving, and fooling around. They are everywhere until the eve of December 6th, approximately. So this is this has already occurred this year. Um, and I like to check each year to make sure that it's still it's still going on. And, it, and this year it, it, it went on. But this is something that happens much earlier than our Christmas, even though everyone celebrates Christmas around the same time. This is a special activity, which is, I, I guess, throughout mainland Europe, they have something special that happens near the beginning of the uh, of like end November, beginning of December. We don't because we have Thanksgiving. So that would just be too cramped. That's so we have Thanksgiving. That's what we do. And then other cultures have like a Christmas add on. Now, here's the controversial black facing is, is the next sec segment of the article <laughs> for activities. Act sorry, for activists like Jerry Afrigi, uh, November and December is the most difficult time of the year. That is because what day Pete is usually played by white Dutch people who paint their face black might wear Afro or curly wigs, paint their lips plump, and often wore golden earrings in the past. For I have a, a question. Yep, yeah, sure, shoot. Blackface. Yeah. I'm actually, I, I don't know what the global standard is. I know it's a no-no for, and I know the reasons in why America. in the US, but is, is, that, is that universal? Is that? It is. Well, minstrel, minstrel, well, first of all, uh, US minstrel shows used to tour throughout Europe. So it's, it's not like it's a, well, the U.S. may have been the catalyst for such minstrel for that that type of activity, but the rest of Europe uh, definitely engaged and uh, and would go see these minstrel shows just the same. And they, and as you see here, there are various traditions that are, that have that same questionable aspect to them. Um, and and this is this is this happens to be one of them. So yes, if you, if you were to say, oh, if I talk to a European, would they know what blackface is and would they think it is wrong? I Usually, yes. Usually, historically, they would they would have some sense of it and say, "Yeah, I don't." As a white person, I'm not going to paint my face black and pretend to be a black person. It's 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 sometimes it's it's not um, it's known. It's a universal no. Good I would say. Good point of clarification. Yeah, sure. Uh, <laughs> so so for Freaky, and I, I hope I'm saying his name correctly. Uh, this is a clear cut back black facing, a racist display of black people that should have long been abolished. Here's the other thing. If this person that we're talking about is Dutch. So even if you were to say in Europe, this is not necessarily known, uh, black people in Europe seem to already know what blackface is, and it seems to be as offensive to them as it would be to a black person in America. So regardless of how a European may want to play this, black people around the world find blackface uh, universally offensive. <laughs> so there's that. There's that. There's that. There's that part. Yeah. Uh, not only does it, he continues, not only does it make black people the target of mockery, he also sees the tradition as a symbol of the Netherlands colonial past and the lack of historical reappraisal of it. The controversy surrounding the Zwarte Piet character has been growing in the country for years. But for fans of the figure, the accusation of racism are misleading and a threat to one of the most important traditions from the Netherlands. And now what is the I mean, other than. You were conditioned from childhood to look at him as a, to have, a, to, you know, you're mm -hmm. conditioned to have affinity for yes. this magical figure. Yes. Um, what about it is so necessary? Well, hold on. Let's see. Oh, this is, this is, I'm going to answer right. right now. Perfect. Zwarte Pete, and I love saying it, a supporter, 
Gilling, uh, this was a guy that they've uh, chose to interview who's on the opposite side, uh, explicitly distances himself from mobs and being put into a political right corner. Uh, he's like one of the head people of the uh, like uh, a Zwarte Pete fan club, if you will. Like they, they put on shows with Zwarte Pete, uh, but the, he believes there shouldn't be a black face debate in the first place. According to him, it's rather a misunderstanding. Black Pete is not based on black people. He claims, but rather derives from pagan folklore, just like the German Krampus, which you highlighted earlier, a demon like dark figure accompanying St. Nicholas. The Dutch Santa Claus figure was originally accompanied by a dark creature that eventually took a human shape. The only thing remnant of that being the paint on the face that was coincidentally black. Due to these roots, Sorte Pete cannot be racist, Gilly argues. There are prints with devil-like depictions of Krampus. Definitely, I agree. Historian Koning says, another person interviewed for this, but that doesn't change the fact that the present-day depiction of Zwarte Pete as the likeness of a black moor from Spain started appearing in the 19th century, she adds. Culture doesn't develop in a vacuum, Koning says. Black facing as a stereotypical depiction of black people was not an isolated phenomenon of American minstrel shows, but was also very common in the Netherlands as a former colonial power. So, I, I mean, it's interesting if you're going to say it's the devil, because I would be very curious to trace back roots of depictions of the devil and and using colors to to represent that, um, because that I don't know what his background is but yeah. i'm sure there is a whole academic discipline devoted to that i'd be very curious well, to learn well i did because do... you have because you have you have um christian judeo values forming in like egypt and then yeah. even within egypt their adversaries were the new was the were the nubians right yeah. like you like i'd be very right. curious to see how these things formed um, i think i think he's being a little liberal like, or, like well, let's i don't think we should be so specific i think he's just more playing on uh like a demonic figure uh yeah it's just some sort of adversarial figure to the light Not i mean i can tell you what i saw in eastern europe in the mountains yeah, um sure. i saw yeah, uh, santa claus going through this beautiful christmas market I was having um a pretty fun time and mm -hmm. um all of a sudden about 15 20 feet back um, from Santa, uh, you you hear this like clanging type thing, and there's this dude in blackface crawling on his hands and knees in chains. This is what they beat, which Santa was was holding. Yeah, and like yeah, trying to scare the kids and all that stuff. Not a, not not any kind of creature you would have affection towards is very much like a scary thing. But the way in which they were like, what's scary? What's what could we put on here? I mean. I don't know. I, I, you didn't even have to use your imagination. You just looked at it. And you're like, oh my god, what, <laughs> what are you guys doing? Um, but there it is. Yeah, yeah. Well, that that that's a, that's that would be Zorte Pete's. That that's a Zorte Pete's. You you saw one. You saw a parade of that. So uh, so welcome, welcome to to Mayland Europe. With I mean, with where where where? I mean, I'm just looking for if you're gonna say it's a demon or a devil. Um, I've never seen one depicted that way. I've seen slaves depicted that way. I've never seen anyone else depicted that way. So, and I've seen depictions of, I'm not, you know, I don't know everything about the devil and demons and, and hell and all of that, but uh, it's just, where is that depiction now, that he's I, drawing on? Right. So, so I will say this one thing. I will, well, I will come back to that actually. I will, I just, or are you saying that that, that, that hmm. evolved in a vacuum because are you saying that that matured in isolation and that's how they did it, but that's not any reflection on the lore the, like the, the well, the I, think that, like the, the I, I think that when there's not that the canon of Pete. Well, I, all right. So there's there's a couple of different things going on here, um, and they're, they're not all bad, but I do not believe that they are actually connected to Zwarte Pete, which is that I think this is the issue in that area. Like us, I don't want to say like particularly Scandinavian, but throughout Scandinavia, Germanic uh, that that part that part of the world. Odin would uh, look at the world, and if he wanted to, this, this so Odin is uh, like one of the the gods of the uh, of Norse mythology. He would often travel with two ravens, and those ravens were his eyes into what was going on in the with mortals in the uh, in the mortal realm. So people have likened that they basically have connected the tradition of Zwarte Pete's helpers and he himself 
Santa comes to check in on children to see how they're doing, whether it be good or bad. His helpers are these black creatures. I guess you could connect that if they took human form, for some reason, they end up being the perpetration of what you would you would assume would be African slaves. But I, I, I don't know. I'm just I'm trying to say that there there are people making that connection because it's 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 I would say it's less Christian oriented. I would say it's more connected back to the old the old beliefs. But that even if it were true, this current depiction is very much rooted in the 19th century. And I think that's what most people are co- concentrating f- on. F- fine. Yeah. But then it was co-opted. Exactly. And and now we here we are. Exactly. Like there's th- like, but that happens with any symbols. Look at the yeah, swastika. Look at look at the don't tread on me. Look at even mm-hmm. geez, the American flag now. It's mm-hmm. like it's been totally co-opted by by the MAGA movement. So yeah, yeah. Um well, you there can you go. Well, you're making look a good at point. symbolism in that way and say, yeah, sure. If you want to like go back to the roots yeah. and 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 be a purist in that sense and totally ignore everything that's happened between now and then, that's kind of ignorant. So I mean, whether or not that's true and whether or not that's where Pete has, has its genesis, yeah. I have no idea. But um, I don't know, man, a dude from uh, the 21st century looking at some guy in chains and blackface crawling. Uh, I was like, the devil did not pop into my head. Good that's okay. I did not look at him and say, oh, look, a devil or oh, look, a demon. Hmm. I know that there was a movie and they added horns and stuff because <laughs> they had to make sure that you knew. Um, but, uh, yeah. it, it, when, when I guess th- they don't have a Hollywood budget, uh, they just kind of, they just go with uh, regular old blackface and chains. Yeah. So yeah. I also want to be fair to the, the, the Dutch people, uh, apparently, and this is, this is, this is good. This is why I check in on it because I like to know what I like to see things evolve. Chimney Pete replaces black Pete. <laughs> so by now it's so yes. now so by now in most schools at many parades and on tv black pete have black peets have been replaced <laughs> by the so-called excuse this shush shush shushin peeton shushin peeton it's a good effort thank you which in English translates to chimney peats. Their faces I, are dirtied with soot, resulting from their trips through the chimney to deliver presents. <laughs> and he speaks with a Cockney accent. And <laughs> yes, well, it's very popular. I can just think of Dick well, Van Dyke now. It's, yeah, exactly. It's very, very Poppins. Uh, some cities have also started including gray, yellow, or purple colored peats to their parade in addition to the black ones. So there, so there definitely is a cultural acknowledgement that maybe this doesn't look so good to foreigners coming in and looking at you know that's a really good point too because no one's saying that the um whatever i don't even i'm i I, i'm going on a limb here whatever the lesson or theme um overall maybe at the highest level no one is saying that you 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 can't retain that but the depiction you've frozen the depiction in time and maybe even tainted it with some with some recent things in our past that we would rather move on from uh We've gone over this before. I mean, there are documentaries on this. The fairy tales in their original state are not what they are now. In fact, Correct. you would look at them and be like, wow, these are pretty brutal. Yeah. Um, well, look that's at, like Hansel and Disney. Gretel yeah. and things like that. Yeah. And Disney, right? Well, this is, but, yeah. But, but they change for your audience. And so maybe it is time to your point and to what the people in um, the Netherlands are doing is to update them for a new audience because they are out of touch. They have lost their morality, their, 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 um, I don't know, what are they? What do fairy tales do? They offer a a, a cautionary tale. They, yeah, they've, cautionary they've tale. lost the message. Yeah. Because yeah. everyone's getting bogged down in the visuals now and you're yeah. losing the, the theme. Well, yeah, I think that if the if people are coming to your country and they're they're slack jawed, they're they're visibly uncomfortable witnessing something that you find uh, as a cornerstone of your culture, maybe it is time to to say, well, may, it, modernization may not be too uh untoward maybe it's time to modernize these things a little bit which again chimney pete slightly better i don't know if it's really slightly better i i, I feel like it's black it sounds like light. a justification to use blackface yeah it, it, it kind of says that we will we it, it basically it's we're not getting rid of the blackface but we're gonna we're gonna give it a background story <laughs> it, that's that's perfect that's perfect i got nothing to add to that that's exactly it uh, to end this article, just so, so we end out what Black Pete is, uh, Gilling, this is the defender, also says that he does not mind the change. This is a response to Chimney Pete. He, however, believes that it might take away from the magic if Black Pete's wear less makeup. 
since children could recognize them. Also, he also does not see the need to find a compromise since he doesn't agree with the blackface criticism in the first place. I, I got a solution. Put on a devil mask. You're saying it's the devil. Put on a devil mask. Well, to them, why does it have well, to be devil, blackface? Well, the devil might look more like a black person. <laughs> that just might be who their devil is. I would also say that in an evolved country, and if we only mindset, had a holiday that used its imagination to represent evil and and nefarious things, if only um, r- sometime right before this, maybe two months before or so, we had a holiday where people dressed up in costumes. They would give you an inventory of masks to choose from somehow that holiday does without blackface. Why can't this one? I it just, the, it, it is so absurd. Just, it just does without blackface. There, 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 def, there have been issues. I know, I know, I know. <laughs> but on the whole, on the whole, if you think about all the kids dressing up overwhelmingly, um, people have found an alternative means to express their desire to be. Um, we we've just gotten out of the Pocahontas phase. It's just gotten to the point where putting on India dress is not a problem. Listen, it's, it's, I'm not saying it's perfect. What yeah. I'm saying is that the idea yeah. that you are trying to find loopholes to continue using blackface while in the same breath yeah. saying that it's the devil yeah. and you can't get your head around another way to represent the devil. The way that if the same way, exactly what I was saying, I didn't look at that dude and was like the devil. It wasn't the devil. Nothing about how it is depicted anywhere around the world. It's just there are so many other ways to depict the devil. Like pick one. Yeah. Yeah. Pick one that isn't offensive to a large portion of of humanity. Well, I would also say that, you know, it's it's that age old concept of me, me. Like it's like what I want trumps how other people feel. It's it's my tradition is 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 supersedes the feeling of minorities who live in my country. And minorities who live abroad who who find your tradition inherently racist, uh, but because it's mine, we have to keep doing it. So there there is something to be said for that mentality. Uh, I think that this ends out pretty nicely. Uh, Afri, uh, this is the person who is uh, against the uh, the blackface uh, tradition. Uh, he says it remains clear if the tradition is destroyed when we take out the racism, then it is a tradition we should never. Ha- have never handed over to our children. And I thought that that was a very poignant. Yeah. Place, Dude, stop doing blackface. Place. Pick anything else. No one is saying you can't have Santa's demented helper. If that's what you're into, follow him around and scare all the kids in the village. Go for it. Just don't do blackface and maybe drop the chains, but you know, at least for a little while until everyone gets over it. Um, now, now I, I do just, have, yeah, I, I don't know. know. I, I've said it a thousand times. I'm not yeah, well, say it well, I have one more thing. So, it's just so blowing this, my mind. In front. It's well, blowing I, my mind that the solution is right there. It's so freaking easy. And you're not sullying your tradition. It is because that's why I asked you. It is universally looked at as just not a cool thing to do. And the history is there. No one is saying you can't have Krampus or Pete or anyone. You just don't do the blackface. Right. Is, is that kind of what the issue is? Oh, that's exactly what the issue is. Yes, you just don't do the blackface. You just don't depict him as a black person. Yeah, in chains, walking behind their master, who is white. Now, I want to say this one more thing on the what is Swarte Pete and the history behind it, because I think that the article leaves out a very crucial part part of this story, and maybe because it's a German media outlet responding, like talking about a cult, like a cultural thing in the Netherlands. But I think that this really wraps up a little bit of the um, I, I, what I would call the disingenuine, disingenuine nature of the argument of the pro Suarte Pete crowd. And this isn't a note because I, I, I ran across an article that talked about the different songs that children sing with regard to Sinterklaas. Oh, God, I can't wait to hear this. And this and, and a popular theme throughout many of these songs, which, again, the article does not respond to. This is what this person wrote as a note to um, on a song site. It's called uh, MamaLisa.com. It does like heritage songs across the world for different holidays. This note for the Santa Claus song is this. I think you're familiar with Santa Claus, but as a reminder, he lives in Spain. And when he arrives in Holland by boat, he visits children and brings gifts. This is this was noted by the uh, the article that he has to arrive. They didn't say that he comes from Spain, but this is well known. 
Santa Claus rides a dapple horse over the rooftops when delivering gifts. The children often have sing songs for him in hopes that he's listening. The servants of Santa Claus keep him posted on which child have been good all year and who may have slipped up here and there. I'm not sure who came up with this weird thing, but the children are told that if they misbehaved, Santa Claus will put them in a burlap sack in which the servants usually carry gifts and take them back to Spain. The servants, who are all named Zwarte Pete, are at times mistakenly referred to as racist concept within the holiday, but they merely put on that makeup because long ago, Santa Claus lived in, in the Spain slash Portugal area, and back then, that's where the Moors lived. And they happen to be those who served with Santa Claus. <laughs> Basic meaning of this. That's song. the justification. That's the justification. Wow. <laughs> is that is that it's okay? Oh, it's not. It's not, it's not so bad. Just it's, hear me out. Hear me out. They're not it's... racist because they're just enslaved Moors or enslaved Muslims slash Black people who used to rule over Portugal and Spain, mind you, that now serve this white saint that comes up to our land to deliver presents. That's essentially what she said. I'm just going to break it down to you guys historically. That's what this person is basically is saying to assuage the fears that it's racist. So, but but we know what popped in my head when you're talking about this. Can you imagine if all the elves were blackface? It would totally change the whole concept. But then it also shows you how easy it is. You can keep everything. Just change the blackface. Because <laughs> if you made the elves all blackface, all of a sudden, them toiling in the workshop and doing all this stuff would be a totally different uh, uh, it is. view. It's a totally different affair. You're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. It changes the whole scope of what the Santa Claus mythos is intended to be. If Santa Claus all of a sudden is lording over black elves that are chained to their workbenches that cannot leave and have to follow him everywhere... It definitely adds a darker dimension <laughs> to the Santa Claus story without saying anything about it. You're absolutely well. Look, right. you get you get to you get to you get to keep all the magic. You just drop the blackface. You can keep all the magic, whatever you're into. I, I mean, I'm not really into all the stuff that you were describing, but that's not that's that's cultural. But th this is just something that you can change, and it's a it, it's a good change. It is a good change. Just change it. Miracle on 34th Street wouldn't have that magical gravitas if Santa Claus appears at Macy's and has this black foot footman that basically has to kneel to Santa Claus as the children come to sit on his lap. I feel like the movie would not have aged as well and people may, may not feel as comfortable watching you it or remaking it. Today. Taking your kid, taking your kid to the mall and going to get a picture with Santa and the elf that's that's managing the line and ushering your kid is in blackface. <laughs> like it's it's absurd, but that's what this is. Yeah. Like that's what they're defending. And you're just like, dude, could you just drop the blackface? And we're all good. We're good. Like I, you know, the relationship that you as an elf have with Santa is your own. I'm not going to judge it. Um, but you know, getting paid in candy canes isn't a lot. But I mean, man, it's just like such. I think what I'm getting wrapped up in is the simplicity of the solution. And now you may ask, okay, so th this is interesting. This happens every year. Uh, the so what? Why is this Why is this significant this year? Why Why are you bringing it up, Antoine? Why, why are you talking about it in this particular Christmas? And that is because the Dutch involvement in the transatlantic slave trade has become center stage because of an apology that was just issued on Monday. This recording, we're recording on the 19th. So this is like a Christmas. It's like a Christmas gift apology by the current Dutch prime minister over what over the Dutch involvement in the slave trade. Now, there are two articles that talked about it. Uh, I just the first one just highlights what the Dutch, how the Dutch were involved in the slave trade. It says the Dutch involvement in the slave trade. This is an NPR article. Uh, over centuries, the Dutch bought and shipped some 600,000 enslaved people from Africa in the transatlantic slave trade, about 5% of the total taking them to the Caribbean colonies, uh, such as uh, Suriname and uh, Curaçao, uh, as well as other European colonies across America. Enslaved Africans were also forcibly moved to Dutch colonies in the Indian Ocean, like present-day Indonesia, and enslaved Balinese or Javanese were transported to modern-day South Africa. Many perished in the crossing. For those who survived and for their descendants, the life of hard plantation labor was brutal. Take, for example, the case of Wally, 
an enslaved man on a Surinamese sugar plantation who took part in a revolt in 1707 and whose story was featured in an exhibition at Amsterdam's uh, Rick's Rick's Museum. I think it's like the Rick's Museum. Have you heard of that? Uh, I I hope I'm saying that right. Uh, Last year, as punishment for his insubordination, Wally had his flesh torn off with red hot pincers and was buried alive. His head was later displayed on a pike. So today, oh, my God, <laughs> well, people need to understand how brutal slavery was, especially. Uh, uh, yeah, <laughs> that, that's really that's 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 just what happened. That's just the story of a guy who revolted. And then that that's how he was made an example of. Now, I want to go to what happened today. So the prime minister, so prime minister Mark Root apologized for Netherlands slavery past. Some affected nations and groups have criticized the move. Uh, Dutch Prime Minister Mark Rutt delivered a speech on Monday, formally apologizing for his country's historical role in slavery and its consequences into the present day. Today, this is him speaking. Today, on behalf of the Dutch government, I apologize for the past actions of the Dutch state. Uh, for centuries, the Dutch state and its representatives have enabled and s- stimulated slavery and have profited from it. It is true that nobody alive today bears any personal guilt for slavery. However, the Dutch state bears responsibility for the immense suffering that has been done to those that were enslaved and their descendants. Uh, he also said I, that. No, I, I got yep, I, I, yep. I'm, I'm curious because I, that line, you, you emphasize it and it sticks out. And you often hear that here, which is annoying because we're all like, yeah, dude, like, yeah, let's not get bogged down in that. But like, what are we going to do about it now? Equity and all that. Is that actually a talking point in Europe as well? Like, do they? Yeah. Because I guess they say the same thing, right? Like, well, I didn't get it. I'm not benefiting Absolutely. from that. I don't have like wealth from that or something. Yeah. Well, um, I mean, it's also, again, it's not a well informed argument. Uh, and uh, we haven't talked about it, but recently there was a big kerfuffle with uh, England. There was like a tweet from some ministry within the UK back in tw- that was basically citing that in 2015, they had finally finished paying off the uh the immense amount of loans that the english government took out in order to pay the uh the, the former slave owners after emancipation and uh and so i was just saying like so the, basically it let everyone know that up until 2015 mo- a lot of some of their i don't want to say a lot i don't want to embellish but a portion of their taxes that you were paying were being paid to recoup the, the loss the, well, of reparations, of slaves. It, they, they, were were paying, reparations. Re, they were paying reparations to, slave to the slave owners. That's correct. And then they announced it. That's correct. That's correct. And it was a big deal. But I'm just trying to put out yeah. that it. What I feel is really momentous about that tweet. While it was, uh, it ended up being you know something an error for the for that you know British government or for for the Brits. I think worldwide everyone needs to take a look at that because we have very similar issues in most countries that had or participated in any degree with the slave trade. There are still parts of our culture, our laws, our legal system, any part of our systems that are the way they are specifically because they were designed to allocate around slavery. Slavery had such a big role in the way that the European powers of the day came to power and then colonialism on the back of it, that much of the way that our culture is designed is still built off of off of that aspect. I mean, I was going to say that the people don't know this, but eman- they, they call them uh, it was like uh, the way they call it is like emancipation compensation. That's like their emancipation compensation acts were very common in the uh, mid 19th century. England is talking about theirs, which they just finished paying off in 2015. DC also did that in order to free slaves in DC before the Civil War, about maybe a year or two before the Civil War. DC paid all the former slave owners within the DC area in order to free their slaves. I'm sorry. The agreement was we're going to pay you like for hundreds of years. Well, they, well, you pay, no, you pay a sum and then it's just because it's a loan. So the government needs to recoup that loan, and that that's that's what's taken so long. It's the loan, so it's always been a loan for the most part. I'm not saying DC's loan is still outstanding; that may have already been paid who off the, off the books. Who, who who was paying back the loan for for the UK? Oh, the people, the British people. 
So there was a line item. That's correct. In everyone's in every annual budget. That's correct. That was reparations for slave for owners. slave owners until 2015. And for, for I, I don't since when, when I, I'm said hundreds of years because I assume yeah. they ended before us. I think it was um, 1830 something. No one. There, this wasn't ever reported on. I mean, they should nope. have. You only hear about it when it's done to be like, oh man, we would have done something about <laughs> it, but it's done now. So what are we going to do? Only like, because someone I'd be, I would be it. angry. I would be angry. I, I think most people should be angry that they've been that that's been part of their taxes. If you've been complaining about high taxes, part of your taxes was repaying a loan to slave owners back in the 1800s. And so the slave owners, they weren't getting checks. They got their check. They got but their this check. was just the people paying the government back. Yes. For that check. Yeah. Instead of just eating it. That's correct. And they did that up until when again? 2015. So everyone, 2015. That's correct. Merry Christmas. Who's in charge of the budget <laughs> in UK? Is that a royal thing or is that a, a parliament no, it's a thing? Pr- it's a parliament thing. Parliament thing. But a lot of royals had to sign off on it probably because they they get to see these kinds of things. So they they would have known that this is that this has been going on this whole time. I want to know what was the annual payment to the government from the people collectively. That I do not know. I don't know. I mean, it, dude. I mean, it must not have been enough. I mean, think about that's it. the thing. I can make an argument against it either way. Either it wasn't enough and you shouldn't mm-hmm. have done it, or it was a boatload, and then you should have re- you should have reallocated it. You should have. I think it was it was in the billions. Put it back I think into it was, social programs. I think it was the or equivalent. Something. It was like, the equivalent uh, of a couple of like. Uh, I mean, I don't want to throw not like nonsense numbers out there. People should look it up. But I it was it was a, when you compare the sum, it, it's a it's a where nom- was that? Where did that money go? I don't know. Just into a general pot and yeah, probably for, for whatever. Government. Yeah, yeah. They, but they were just collecting it for no. So, but that's but that's interesting because you pay taxes sometimes for specific reasons. Yeah. Or at least you know where this money's going. Like if property taxes, a good portion are going to your schools or whatever it may be. I don't know how it works in the UK, but where was this money going? Well, it wasn't going. That's the thing. It this is this. So this is an argument I was going to kind of bring up with regard to the to the Dutch. So the, the Dutch have decided that they're going to spend like 20, I think it's like $27 million on a new museum, uh, a couple million dollars on like education for uh, about racism and, and, and all this stuff. But the thing is, is that the Netherlands also, and I couldn't connect anything, so I, I couldn't find how the Netherlands actually paid off their emancipation compensation, but they also paid their slaves in order, paid their slave owners to uh, our uh, uh, Money I'm not gonna, in order to yeah, free their slaves. I'm, just I'm not going to argue that part, right? Because yeah, 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 yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. This, you know mm. it was the times. Like, I'm not. It, would, would I agree with it? You, 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 you your hurdle. You get over your hurdles in whatever way yeah, you yeah. can. I'm not going to argue or be pro or con. Yeah. I think the issue here is that this was being this was being collected up into modern times. Like that's right. insane. But it wasn't also allocated to the former colonies. That's that. That's what I guess that's the problem that a lot of people have is that we're collecting ad- and kick it back into the communities that were adversely affected and say, well, oh, that's what I'm saying. we paid we, we paid this and we were collecting it to recoup it from the slave owners. But, you know, yes. we're going to keep collecting this, but now we're going to give it to the former slave. Like, yeah, colonies, people, right? colonies or uh, that would, or something. Yeah, that I mean, that, that's, and then publicize that. And that's a huge win. Well, I think it's th- that's part of how these conversations become quite disingenuous because people balk. Like if you were to ask an average person, Hey, should we pay reparations to pay to the ancestors of slaves? They would be like, "No, you're not taking my tax money to give it to some people uh, that I don't really know that were really adversely affected by the slave trade." Even though every black person in Europe was affected by the slave trade, otherwise they wouldn't be there. That being said, something like this would have made sense for a government to say, "Hey, we're collecting money because we're paying back a debt and we're going to reallocate it. This is our reparations. We're going to use this money." to do reparations is a clear connection. It's so simple. It's very hard for someone to argue to say, it hey, was already being done. They didn't exactly. have to pass it anything. It was already being done. Oh, it, the, the way was there. Yeah. It was that's paved. Right. It was such a, it's a, it's, it was a, it was a win. It's what we call low heading, low hanging fruit. And you want to tackle racism. That's how you do it. You know, you have this budget line pe- that's been going it. on for hundreds of years, reallocate it to help the service of people that have been adversely affected. And instead like, of doing you- that, they just pocketed it and then let everyone know you no longer have to pay for it in 2015 because it's it's all done. We've 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 uh, we've matched budget. We uh, we've recouped this loss. The government is 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 in the is in the green. We're ready to do some serious work for you as our as a uh, as our as your representatives. That's what's crazy about it. And I guess what I'm trying to get at is that all the countries have similar stories. 
and probably have similar things going on and choose not to actively be participants in the history that they've created. A lot of these countries, Dude, if, if our country is collecting taxes to repay a debt like that today, I would I think be interesting. Well, would be I mean, well, here's that, the thing. that would be insane. America is one of the few countries that did not wholesale participate in these emancipation compensations because instead we went into a civil war. So, so we don't have these yeah. on our books because of the war. Uh, but who knows? Maybe people are still paying for the war today. Who knows? Or maybe there was money given out to the Southerners at the end of the war. In some I feel like that would have come up. That's just crazy. Well, we, hey, you would think this would have come up, right? <sighs> UK is pretty secretive, though, about things, aren't they? They are a little bit. You're right. That's 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 kind of true. Uh, yeah. But anyway, anyway, all I wanted to point out was that that this is happening today and people are up in arms to say, hey, we don't accept your apology. A, they they left out a lot of their former colonial powers as part of this apology tour uh, in terms of like deciding what they should be doing. They decided it on their own to say, hey, we're just going to issue an apology and we're going to we're going to create a museum that people can come to pay in the Netherlands. You, you're going to this museum in, the, in like you're, you're going. They're basically saying on your pain and suffering. We're going to build a museum to get more tourism to the Netherlands. I'm so sorry. <laughs> that's 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 also part of the apology. We're going to build a massive museum in the Netherlands, in Amsterdam, that people can come to look at how bad we were in terms of our like how we took advantage of the of Africa and 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 all its people during throughout the ages, colonialism and slavery. Uh, don't forget to get your stamp on your your passport. Uh, and, and enjoy some of the Dutch food and delicacies while you're here. <laughs> Again, if proceeds went towards something productive, constructive, yeah. then it would be a way to continue right. that. But it's not. I'm, I'm, I'm assuming it's not. And it's just their cash machine, well, it's, their, yeah, their, well, their magnet for tourism. It's, it, it doesn't feel like an honest apology. And uh, and I think that that's I, I think it's so funny to have that just opposed with this tradition because in this article or at least in the uh, previous article it's still highlighted that this apology is being given in the month of december during christmas time while the dutch continue to celebrate zwarte piet with mm. no apparently half of people polled in the netherlands agree that zwarte piet should stay as it is you could probably go to the museum and get pictures with them <laughs> well <laughs> That's he. He'll probably be at the door. He'll probably yeah. at the door to the slavery and colonial, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, museum in the, in, in Amsterdam. That's, that's checking correct. coats. Yeah, check. Well, of course he'll be checking coats because he's a servant. That's what he does. <laughs> <laughs> wow. No signs that he could leave. He, he's permanently a fixture of that museum. This is where he's. This is where he's found now. To what they Pete. So, uh, so for anyone who didn't know, now you know. Now you, yeah, that's that's hard to forget. You should look Chim up an image. Chimney anyway, Pete. just Google Chimney Google Pete. The the that like <laughs> Black Pete. Just 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 Google image Black Pete. You'll you'll have a field day of fun. The idea that they tried to like manufacture an origin story for his blackface is just. Don't you see? It's a soot. He's yeah, but he's you, dirty from coming down dude, the chimney. It's just soot. You yeah, but I'm gonna argue that yeah, uh, you could go up and down the chimney or whatever. You're not covered like that. <laughs> it's just not that. Well, the, that's well, that's the that's the argument that the guy is making about how this is watering down his tradition. He's like, you need the thick needs black more paint. black. You need, more black. You, need you need serious shoe polish. You, you it need needs to, to it needs really, to be dark. It needs to cover everything. He's not yeah. black enough. He's got to be really black. That's how you know he's a demon. It's because crazy. He's, he's He's just, I, I don't know why I'm saying this. He's like, I just want him to be Nubian black. He just needs to be African black. <laughs> He's a demon, but I want him to be African black. I don't know. There's no smears connection. like so. Yeah, there's, it's yeah. just the idea. Yeah, it's just. I mean, it's, no it's there. It's there. It's it's there for everyone to to think their own thoughts. Uh -oh. That's that's incredible. <sighs> so, God, was that your heavy topic? That was my heavy topic. Okay, good lord. <laughs> that was my heavy. All right. Mine is not, yeah, uh, it's a hard act to follow. Um, it's a Christmas episode. It's a Christmas <laughs> story. <laughs> Merry that's a, Christmas. That's a Christmas story. Happy holidays. That, that is a Christmas story. Um, so for my Christmas uh, topic, I'm going to give a gift of a good example, um, something a little more cheery. 
Okay. Here I go. Okay. Finland's defense minister. I don't know how to say this name. Anti Kekonen, Kekonen, mm-hmm. Anti Kekonen, maybe um, announced he would be going out on parental leave for two months right after Christmas to take care of his six month old son amid the Russian Ukrainian war on its border and Turkey blocking its NATO membership for reasons um, I'm funding some terrorists or something, apparently. Um, okay. okay. So, in the face of these regional challenges, the Finns are actually totally fine with the decision. Um, and, and to be fair, if we're comparing it to the U.S., Pete Buttigieg, who is our transportation secretary, not our defense secretary, but he took four weeks off for parental leave. So not two months, but he took four weeks off. It raised some eyebrows. It got some news attention, but he did it mm-hmm. and we survived. Okay. And that's that. The interesting tidbit here <clears throat> in this article that I found more interesting than, than this story that's relevant was back in 1998. 1998, Finland's prime, me- prime minister took parental leave. Can you imagine if a president took off? That I have a hard time imagining. Yeah, you're absolutely right. But I mean, we've never had uh, a president with a child born in office. So here's an interesting one. So um, Finland gives each parent 160 days of paid leave. Fathers whose children were born before September 20, uh, 2022 are entitled to 54 days of paternity leave. And about 80% of dads in Finland take uh, some amount of paternity leave. But so, and I had trouble finding this, and I, I bet you I could find it if I did a, a, some more digging. But that thing of, I don't know what the cutoff for that is, but before 2022, there have been presidents with young kids that Not maybe that didn't. Young. But that's my thing is like, how young do they have to be? I mean, Obama's kids were pretty young, not like super young, but they were. No, I mean, they were, they were, I mean, they were, I would say they're at least over. 10. Yeah, but it says that if they were born before 2022, then you just, everyone gets 54 days per kid. Yeah. But I mean, when, when do you take those 54 days? Usually Whenever I you imagine want. in the early courses of their, their. I mean, that's interesting if there's an expiration date. Well, I, I just think there's probably a cultural, like, you know, I, I just. I don't see, I mean, I, I'd be interested if people are still taking that the a portion of those days for the, for the 18th birthday or, or, or my kids turning 16. Well, if you never got one, it would be interesting. Yeah. Um, but, but so maybe, yeah. I mean, Hey, JFK's kids were pretty, pretty young though, because uh, John Jr. They have him. He's playing under the desk, right? Isn't that Yeah. Right? He's playing on a desk, but I mean, I, he must be at least five though. I would say he's like five years old, which would be beyond when you'd be taking parental leave. Well, the way in the way that we, yeah, but that's interesting because it's in the way that we think about it. Yeah, like if you have 160 days, almost you would almost be benefiting the business or the country in a way if you did stretch it out until they were like much much older. Um, so, like, what would be I the mean, big the, deal? The I know that in the in, hassle, but yeah, really, I mean, because it's government afforded, it's just on your yeah. I mean, if they keep track of the taxes you pay every year, they can't keep track of how many days you've taken that are paid leave. Yeah. I don't find it to be that. I think it's odd. I don't find it to be that bad. I think it's odd because we think of it as you only have a year to take it. Like in the U S you yeah. have a year. Yeah. If you're lucky, you even right. get anything. Yeah, If you're lucky, you, you, get you have a yeah. year. Yeah. Um, and it has to be like consecutive for sometimes, or you only yeah. get a percentage yeah. pay. It's, they don't make it easy, but I thought that that was interesting. And, um, I think Sweden gets Sweden gets 480 days. Oh wow. So 40 I mean, 240. But do they say when they usually end up taking them? Because I mean you're right. You gotta you have to stretch it out. I mean it's only 365 days in a year. That's not even work, that's not working days either. So you'd have to stretch it out over a couple of years. But I imagine that by the time a child is seven or eight, I imagine that most parents culturally the the, the days would be done. You would be still taking those days. Well, if, I would imagine that most people would take them. Because you need the most help in the beginning, exactly. Uh, because then they get into schooling and right. stuff. That's what I'm saying. So they be gone the by the end. Yeah, yeah. So that's, I'm just. I mean, it, it would be interesting to see if we ever had a, a young president who had a newborn, not a newborn, but maybe a child who was under the age of two, taking office. That would be very interesting to see how that president would handle. But uh, so your thing affairs. was no one's been tested with that yet. That's what I'm saying. Um, exactly. What I'm saying is. I'm not sure it would be culturally acceptable regardless. I think that we live in such a partisan time. I the, think president, the president, the yeah. president. 
not the defense secretary, not the transportation secretary. Yeah. The president's like, I'm going to take, I don't know what the parental leave would be. I mean, like I said, Sweden, 240 days. Can you imagine the president saying, yeah, I'm going to take that now. I'll see you guys later. Just, I mean, I had to look this up while you were talking and uh, because this is funny. You're right. If you announced it, it probably would be a problem. But I remember there was a tracker when Trump was in office for his golf vacations. Mm-hmm. He he spent 307 days golfing during his presidency. Yeah. He would but argue that he was working, but yeah. Well, I, 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 I'm not on his side. I, I, I know. I'm just, I'm just it's trying to get out that. Well, the irony is because of how, how much do he, it. he criticized. Yeah, he Obama. criticized his predecessor yeah, yeah. for doing that. Yeah, but I, I just—I guess I'm trying to get at that. It depends on how it's framed, and and again, it depends on what the opposition party, no matter how this president goes about taking those days or doesn't take those days, I feel like is going to lambast that president. I, based on what Trump did, that's so excessive considering he was a one-term president, 307 days out of office. I don't know. I I, I I'm just using it to say that I think it's possible and that people can accept it i don't think it's as bad as we may frame it to be and i think that it feels so basically out there because there's just never been a president with young children so we've never had to consider it before let me ask you this shoot if um and it could go either way it could be it could be a female candidate or a male candidate but if the female was pregnant whether she was running or her husband was running yeah do you think that would hurt electability? Absolutely. Absolutely. Because we're a puritanical workhorse culture and people would be like, that president can't work very hard because his either if it's the woman themselves that's pregnant, I mean, I can't even imagine it. I mean, the, the misogyny and embedded in our political system is is of such that I mean, I, I it's like a non star. It's not even possible. Um, and then, and then, and then, I mean, you can see the, the ads too. I mean, I, no, I, we don't even I, have to think very out far about how that would go down. I, I, there'd be well, we're, of at, like, we're at a state now that like Fox News wouldn't even hide it. They would have oh, someone like Tucker just like yeah. going out and saying, go it. crazy. Yeah go, yeah. go hard in on that. They would say, well, how could she do the nuclear button if she has to go give birth and she could be out for it? Yeah, but it'd be, it'd be so ridiculous and, and asinine. We could use that word. Um, so yeah. But in but, terms of a but guy, then, so even if, it would even hurt if, a guy too. No, I think it would, especially if there was a culture like you're saying that it's acceptable acceptable for him to take off. Because yeah. then they're like, well, what are you what are you going to do? You're going to take off for a couple of months in your oh, first yeah. term. Yeah, that's exactly right. That's exactly right. Yeah. Um. So I I don't because especially with elections, uh, new presidents, those first what is it like hundred days? That's like a yeah. Whole that's thing. everything. That's everything. So and people um, would use that historically. They would cite that. They'd be like, you you can't take off in the first hundred days because that's that's your whole administration. So it. I don't know. I, I don't because there's yet that other part countries of it. seem to function. That that that's what's funny about it. It's it's only us. We're so of special. Course it would all function. Of course it would all function. We're so special that we have to work all our days. We have to work extreme hours. Otherwise, America will topple. But other and it's funny that you can have both of these conversations, right? Because I feel like if you made the argument to say, dude, the CEO can take time off and the company will still operate. Yeah. The country can have its president, members of Congress, members of uh, of the, the Supreme Court take off and everything still functions. And I think people would be like, yeah, yeah, of course it would, yeah. But then you're like, so this dude's going to go out on maternity, paternity leave. Yeah. And they're like, oh my God. Like, I, exactly I, it's right. just, it's funny because you can like almost have it both ways. Um, well, there's a logical I, brain and then there's the mob brain. And the mob brain, unfortunately often wins out when it comes to selecting that card or punching whatever for the, for your, for your vote. So you don't think we can get over. Yeah. Yeah. You don't think we can get over electability if, if, if one of the two were pregnant Um, and, but now they're in a year and again, either the madam president or Mr. President gets pregnant. Yeah. Do you, and, and parental leave is coming. It's on the table. Do you think that would be an issue in today's world? I don't think it should be an issue, but it would be an issue. Of course, it'd be a political issue. Yeah, I mean, I think I think that we need to also we need to also talk about why it is that no single person, like a person either unmarried or without children, has ever been elected to office as well. 
That's an interesting one, right? How come sing? Yeah, I, I th- or I young enough. That- I should say young enough to have children. So yeah, if someone's too old, and I don't know if there's someone was an you know an older president, you know that uh, I almost feel like they're probably pressured to have a family before they run. To Usually, make them more yeah to palatable to, see more, to make them exactly. more relevant. Well, more well not relatable. just relevant, but also I think that there is um there's a sturdiness in it. They just know that this guy isn't just gonna is it gonna run off. He's he's got kids to take care of, and <laughs> <laughs> his nuclear family locks him down. Uh, I, I mean, there's so much baked into our. Do you think a culture. single male or female could ever win the presidency? No, because I think that a P, again, people are going to say, "Well, what are they going to be doing every time they're out doing the UN stuff, Finland or whatever?" They're going to be drinking and and whoring around. You know, they're going to be like, "Are are they going to be too busy dating and and mingling in order to uh, before running the country?" I mean, you know, it's, it's just gonna, they're going to be hit in both sides. It doesn't matter if it's a guy. They're like or easy a marks. Oh, it's, easy it's just too easy for, it's, for foreign espionage. I, oh, there's that too. Exactly. Who are they dating? Who are they sleeping with? It's it's too much. And let's say they did get with somebody. Then 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 someone's gonna then then we're gonna be like. So instead of running the country properly, you're out on dates. Like that's what you were doing. And then let's say they get this person gets that their significant other pregnant. Then they're gonna be like, well, well, so what? You're just you're you're just out fornicating in the office. You're, you're sort of running the country and now your wife's pregnant and you have to do all these different things how are you going to run the country i mean there's a reason or they'll, call, or, they'll, or they'll call him a bad mom or dad for having yeah, to leave oh, a young kid at home exactly it, it, it it'll run it depends on who's exactly who who's who's pulling the punches who who's out there uh calling the shots in terms of how hard this gets hit so that, i mean that there's a reason our presidents have always followed the same mantra even if they're young like obama their children are still old enough to not call into question how much time they need to spend with them. So that's it. Yeah. Uh, Interesting no, Christmas I, story. <laughs> well, he's taking off right after Christmas. Oh, got it, guys. That's, what, that's going that's off right after is. Christmas. That's what, that's and what it's it and I think that's a good example, right? You have a country whose high level official is taking off for two months. Yeah. Right. Double yeah. what our transportation secretary did, and that was like a big deal. Right. Um. Yeah. And this dude just taking it off in 1998, which I found really shocking because I didn't know yeah. that, that the prime minister took off for parental leave in 1998. I We're talking about in 2022, what would happen? Can you imagine 1998, the president taking off? I mean, less social media. So maybe it wasn't as hot button of an issue. Um, you yeah. weren't even, men weren't even taking off at their in their That's work. That's so true. That's true. Yeah, you've got a good point there. Yeah, you've got a really good point. Yeah, you're right. I don't you're think. Right. No, I don't think that would have worked at all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, no, you're right. So that's a good, yeah, point. that's a really but yeah, point. F- Finland. I just thought great example 80% of the dads take some form of parental leave. That's great. Something to it's something growing to. too. Yeah, it's growing in Finland, uh, in Scandinavia. It wasn't always this way, so let's be fair. It's it's taken a long time because it, it, the laws were enacted to allow men in Finland and men in uh, Sweden to take this leave or throughout Scandinavia, and a lot of them were not doing it because culturally. It was very difficult for to feel comfortable asking your boss for that kind of time off because men just didn't take that kind of time off. But it's it's growing, and that's that's what happens. First, you enact the law, then people start using it. That's how laws work. That's that, that's how, that's how that's good law making. If you if you didn't know, yeah, just well, we 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 tend not to know here that that's how laws work. But if you give it to people, they will start to use it. You got anything else? Yeah, I got. Well, I just have a. I got my one highlight story. The Milwaukee Journal Sentinel, Wisconsin, ranks number two as the state the with the most Christmas cheer, and it says, "Take how that, was, Illinois." How is that, oh, Illinois? All right. How is any of that measured? That's a good question. What are the KPIs <laughs> for Christmas? That's a that's a, that's a really good question. I'll read to you how that. And tell me, it. tell me that, and Buddy the Elf voice. Uh, I I can't. I, you know, I don't. I don't. I can't do the Buddy the Elf voice. Maybe I could do the old guy voice. Uh, can you this? do? Can you do Kirby from Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer? <laughs> No, I don't even remember how that how that voice that stop animation. I don't even remember how that voice goes. Oh God, the dentist elf. Can't remember. I can't remember. Did you ever uh, watch that? Have you watched that? Yeah, recently? of course. I think no, I've not recently. You. No, I haven't watched. Oh that my recently. God, you need to. I, I think I mentioned. I might have mentioned this last year for Christmas. Mm-hmm. You need to watch that. You need to like, pour yourself a drink. Okay. Watch this. It's it, it's thirty minutes of your time or whatever yeah. it is. Yeah, I know they're super short. The Santa. Uh, is it Donner, uh, Rudolph's mm-hmm. dad? Yeah. Uh, whoever it is. Yeah. Um, the the ma- the elf manager. 
Yeah. These three people are so freaking toxic. (laughs) It's insane. It is so offensive the way that they are. Like they are so, they're just really abusive, like really super abusive people. Mm. um and, and well, interesting on a deer um right. but yeah yeah i would, well, I would note, definitely... note to the listener let let i mean hey a let the listeners know where where you can watch this i don't know where you can watch youtube it. youtube okay they're all come so they're check legally out, on come YouTube? check out okay. this pod come check out this pod right and then and then and then google that one you know what you know what? We'll you solid. It. i will put it in the description to this episode <laughs> i will save you the time put it in the cards at the end right? of the episode just do us a favor like this episode yeah go click on that i love it all right, I'm going to let you know where the methodology comes for. Uh, here it is. Uh, according to the Christmas Spirit Report, which is done by a company called CenturyLink, uh, they compile 10 data metrics into two main categories. Christmas-themed online activity within the last 12 months and Christmas-related cultural markers. The metrics were custom-weighted in percentages to assign final rankings. Christmas-themed online activity was weighted at 78.5% of the total ranking. So what is that? that? What is oh, that, I'm though? You. I'm tell you no, what because I don't believe it. Because we have so much commerce in this country. How could anyone outcompete our online holiday presence? Well, this is, sorry. This is, this is within America. I don't know if I made that clear. This is only within the states. This is only about the states. Not, this is number oh, two so those, in America. So those states. Yes, yeah. In America, 50 states. This is between wow. the 50 states. And they outproduced That's correct. Everybody the else. population centers on the coasts? That's correct. For Christmas search. So this is, again, let me continue. It was made up of Google searches for two key terms, weighted at 14.5% each, Christmas movies and gingerbread houses. Google shopping trends for four key terms at 7% each are wrapping paper, Christmas cards, Christmas ornaments, and elf on a shelf. Christmas music streaming, which is 14.5%, and tweets uh, uh, tweets about Christmas during the month of December 2021 rounds it out at with another 7%. Christmas-related cultural markers include the number of Christmas tree farms per capita, was at 7, and charitable giving in the last documented tax year, 14.5%. i am sure, listener, charitable you know, giving, up, it'll be 100%. Uh, so that that's the metrics that were used in this in this poll in order to identify who is the most cheer, who has the most Christmas cheer out of the 50 states. Wisconsin, congratulations at number two. Now, what I like about this article is that they don't really give much credence to number one, which is uh, New Hampshire. And, and I don't blame them because I, I don't really like New Hampshire either. But I, I love that throughout the entire article, they literally just bash Illinois. <laughs> I didn't know that Milwaukee to Illinois. Is it all just like gratuitous, like in parentheses in between a sentence, like like Illinois? It is. It it's like is all so passive bad. aggressive. It is really passive aggressive. Hold on. Let me just find one right now. Not to be Illinoising. <laughs> Believe it or not, New Hampshire was in the same position as Illinois back in 2020, coming in at number 22. But don't think we have to worry about the land of the bears pulling that off. <laughs> I, you know, I'm not I'm not a sports guy. Are they, are they rivals? I didn't know teams. that. I didn't know that there's rivals. I don't know if they're rivals. I apparently oh, no, they I'm are. like because that's funny. I, um, I didn't. I, I apparently they are. I wonder how. Like, yeah. Like, what is their relationship? It's apparently it's a New York New Jersey relationship out in the Midwest. Really? I, did, I never knew that, but I've learned that by this article by how many times they put down Illinois. <laughs> so that is you just really new. really funny. I mean, they're. I was just because I'm. I'm. You know. I know that they're next to each other. I'm trying to just see <laughs> confirming who else is around them. Um, yeah, that's funny that they they picked each other out. Also, they're almost like mirror images of each other. I never noticed that. That's weird. The shapes. I never noticed. So anyway, that. anyway, so uh, that's a that's a lovely little Christmas little Christmas story. Wisconsin, you're number two. You did it. Yeah, I guess we can look up the the where ranking. does New York and New Jersey? I don't know. Rank? I you know it's so funny that it just occurred to me to think about where 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 the tri state ranks in this Christmas list. I but we're not as cheery. I guess we're nowhere near as cheery as those of the north. But that's in not the, uh, New even. England I mean, and, uh, Wisconsin. It's it's all consumer based. That's true. That's true. Well, how I mean, yeah, I guess that's how you would measure it. Yeah. Plus, I mean. You know, I guess that's how you get advertisers, I suppose. I don't know. <laughs> I'm trying to think of what the impetus for the CenturyLink to do 
this type of uh, this type of polling happens to be. They, they're clearly tracking consumer behavior. So anyway, that was my light little Christmas story. Just to let everyone know. If you're listening out there, Wisconsin, congratulations. You got the silver. I want to know. I want to know more about that. Is it that because those are big states? Not all the states are big once you get out of the original 13 colonies, but um I'm just I'm surprised. Like I mean, I'm so I think I'm more surprised because of the metrics. That that's that's what's surprising to me. I'm not offended or anything. I think that's I think it's funny. Uh, but it's if it's all commercially based metrics, I'm wondering if people on the coast are going out more and these people are staying home more and, and they're just consuming in a different way. I don't know. That doesn't make sense. That's like a, a weird. All right. Song. All right. All right. I'm going to do it for you. I, I went out and I did some research while you were, while you were pontificating, while you were hypothesizing mm. the realities of the, of the, uh, the methodology behind the Christmas calculation uh, algorithms. Here's your top 10 America for cheeriest states during the holidays. Number one, New Hampshire. Number two, Wisconsin. Number three, Utah. Funny enough, I actually had another article that I didn't necessarily bring up about how a lot of our favorite Christmas movies are actually being made currently in Utah. Utah is a, has a huge um, burgeoning Hollywood Christmas like hallmark. Uh, apparently, it's like the place to go now to make those That's probably beautiful scenery. Well, that's I guess I think that's why. Yeah. Number four. West Virginia. Good luck, West Virginia. You've, you've made it to number four on something. Number five. So much coal for the stockings. <laughs> if you're bad, number five, Pennsylvania. Number six, Ohio. Seven, Kentucky. Eight, Indiana. And at number nine, <laughs> New Jersey. <laughs> we made top 10. Who's number it. 10? Who's did number it. 10? Delaware. All right. Apparently, That's New Yorkers funny. don't care about Christmas. What are these metrics? It's blowing my mind that none of the population centers are there. New York actually doesn't even fall. Where is New York? I'm looking, looking, looking. Nope. Still no New York. Is it because it's diverse and it's other? 48. Do you think it's, it, wow. do you think it's a, diver- a diversity thing where it's not okay. all like there's holiday spending? I wonder if it was yeah. holiday cheer and not Christmas cheer. It's holiday. It's it's well. They say they said Christmas spirit. So I, I can't. You know, Do you know what I mean? Though I wonder if it's like you know the the population centers are like divided and conquered in that way. Maybe. Yeah, it could be. Could I'm be. not saying that the other other states aren't diverse, yeah. but clearly yeah, yeah. cities and stuff like big yeah. big cities. I don't know. Because could that's be. what's blowing my mind. The 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 purchasing power of um, some of the coastal cities. It's kind of it's kind of crazy, but hey, it is what it is, right? The data, yeah. the data tells the truth. Well, the data that has been ag- aggregated tells a, a, a truth. way yeah, it tells a truth. Yes, it tells a truth. So that's it. That's it for me in my Christmas episode. You got anything else um, to run us out? Nope. All right. I love it. It's perfect then. <laughs> JB, where can they find us? Oh, folks, my little elves. Um, if you like the pod, please. <laughs> a little, you little black peats out there. <laughs> I did not say that. (laughs) Did not say that. But if you do like the pod, um, please subscribe, like, comment on YouTube, Apple, Spotify, Google, Amazon, and more. Follow us on Twitter at Retraction Media. And it is the season of giving. Give the gift of Retraction Podcast. Share it with someone today. Merry Christmas, you filthy animals. Retraction out. Out.